show for anime, manga, comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Black and Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Black and. Hey everybody, this is Aaron Powell. I'm the host of Stupid Movie Tuesday and Aaron Explains the Universe. And you're listening to The Elijah Bailey Show. Thanks for downloading The Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Hey everybody, Elijah 5000 here, the Buckety and myself. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. But we wanted to make sure that you know where to go to get amazing original pop culture t-shirts. Go to our sponsors at riftapparel.com and at checkout, use promo code Elijah Bailey Show to save 10% on whatever your purchase is. It could be clothing, it could be backpacks, it could be posters, it could be a figurine that they have. Whatever it is, you get the lowest price. So again, promo code Elijah Bailey Show at checkout and save 10%. And three, two, one. Welcome back to the like Elijah that Bailey was Show. Pretty rushed. Pretty rushed. Pretty rushed. It wasn't. It was not rushed. Okay. It was perfect timing. But welcome back. This is episode one forty-five, and you know how the schedule has been working. The very first week in the month, of whatever month it is, is comics. Second week is anime. Third week is video games, and fourth week is the Bailey Bugle. So we're on week two of February. Um, always sporting and supporting Black History Month. And we're going to do that in the form of anime. It is our anime day here. A um, couple things are different. I'm in the studio, and as you can see to the top right of me, uh, the Buckety is trapped in a cube with uh, sun behind. Is it, is it warm there? No, it's cold. It's cold in Vegas? Yeah, it's probably, you know, Vegas is a desert place, so it's like about I think 50-ish. <laughs> Ish somewhere in there. So I was just hoping that it would be warm since it's like cold down here. Do we got iced over a little bit? And it was, it was it horrible. Still, I, I know um, I left Thursday, Thursday during the day. Um, so I know that Thursday ice storm came through, which threw me off. Yeah, it was uh, horrible. How, how's it right now? It's not that bad. Like uh, the roads are clear. It's just like c- cool in the wind, really. I think the high is supposed to be like 32, 38, somewhere in there. Oh, okay. And Hopefully when I come back, I will bring the heat. The warm weather? With me. Yes, yes. I hope yes. so as well. Um, I'm uh, posting on the Discord now, but as I said at the beginning of the show, this is the anime show, and we have a couple major segments that we, we typically hit, and we've added some new ones as well. First segment is going to be anime update, where we bring you the current news in the anime industry, anime world, whether it be video games, anime themselves, um, and then we have our special section, which is pretty much going to be anime shmanime. Uh The last time on comics, you called it just Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we changed. We said uh, my anime <laughs> is black, and I am too. That's the segment for anime I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, and then we also have a new segment called Wordsmith. Where we're both, and I felt kind of good yesterday because I was going over Japanese, and I actually could. I was like, man, if I was having a conversation with somebody over giving a gift, I could have that conversation. Um, oh, okay. Good or, job. or we have maybe we need to touch touch my Japanese a little bit more. Uh, I think you're doing well now. As you can see, he's disappeared. He's a magician, but yeah, the <laughs> the wordsmith is where we give you a term, a popular term that we find in our anime shows, and then also phrases. So as you're watching anime, you hear certain phrases. If you want to learn Japanese or want to just know exactly what the translation is, you can start piecing these things together. Again, this is the second week in uh, the month of February, which is our anime week. And then we're also going to close out the show with what we do every single show, anime and manga of the month, just to keep you um, up to date. Now, something that we did that was a little bit different is we added um, not only gifts, but also trailers in the show notes. So if you're part of our exclusive Patreon club, patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show, you click on that link. Uh, the hyperlink next to the name, and it'll take you to a trailer or a clip of the show or the character we're talking about, so that way you have better context to it. Um, We'd love to just 
post individual uh, write ups or videos of each anime we talk about, but it would flood the Patreon and you guys wouldn't really be getting exclusive content. You're just getting clips and videos of things that you could get anywhere. So we try to make sure the show notes are condensed down to the information we want you to know about the character or the show and what is most important about it for our conversation today. Yes. Um, other than that, uh, everybody knows what happens when this music comes on. Uh, I, I listened it's to the right. la- listened to the last show and I was kind of disrespected, uh, so I got to redeem myself. Yes. But again, this is episode 145 of the Elijah Bailey Show with the Elijah 5000 and the, the underscore, underscore Buckety. Buckety. And don't, we're... Don't, don't, don't do that to me. Don't, 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 don't do, do that to me, okay? I'm, I'm a special guest that you just have on Skype, okay? I am... The the founder. Don't turn that music up on me, son. Don't, I'm not. I, I'm not turn the music up. I'm turning we it down. A lecture now. <laughs> Whatever. But the Elijah Bailey show starts right now. See, that was more energetic. That was. There we go. We're feeling it. Ah, just grooving. Do you? Uh, oh, you have an Itachi shirt on. Okay. Yes, I do. And I what's like so cool? I uh, went to uh, Tamashi's a while back. Yeah. And I asked. I asked what kind of. Uh, what does it say? And um, there's some Japanese writing right in here. Mm-hmm. It says, I am Itachi. I am Itachi. Hear me roar as I come back. And it's, uh, it's funny because... At the bottom it says, I am Sasuke. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we got a clip that's coming up today where it's actually is Itachi, um, is a part of the clip. It's, it's yes. the, the revived yes. Itachi. Hey, not to get off t- subject too much real quick, yeah. I do want to ask, have you seen that Nightwing yet? Nightwing. No. You haven't seen it? Uh-uh. We got a nice Nightwing trailer. Ah, oh, dude, no. Like live action? Live action, you check it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I gotta check hey, it out. Hey. <laughs> it's, it's like hey. that? It's cold? Yeah, old boy's playing Nightwing. Um, Scott. What is that dude's name? Do you remember that one movie that uh, this guy and his friend and the guy had like he found out he got cancer. Then he went out and started dating. Um, oh, you're talking about uh, Jordan uh, Love it. Is that his name? What else does he? Jason. Play Jason. Why say Jordan? What, he what played. He play? played Robin in Dark Knight. He did. Yeah. Oh, okay. He was a police officer, and they hinted that he would be. You know, his name was Dick Grayson, and they hinted that he would be the next Batman since uh, Kristen. Uh, left. He he had enough of Batman after the Bane and Talia Al Ghul. Yeah, he's like these these people are they, they, no, I'm I'm done. But Is okay, it? that's cool and it works. Yeah. Hey, now I gotta find his name. I think it's Jason Lovett. Jason Jordan Gordon Lovett. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm here. I got it. Keep okay. Going. Well, while you try to find the when while you find the name, let's go ahead and hit our first deal. Um, in uh, anime update, it is. The God Eater 3 English trailer had just come out. Um, And if you guys have not played God Eater, if you have not seen anything about it, this is the official trailer. It's actually a pretty good anime that is heavily stemmed in a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, You can find God Eater. Have have you watched all of the God Eater series? I have not, but let me ask you a question, my God Eater. Is it a RPG or is it an action base? Hack and Slash. Uh, action. So but, it's well, not like a like a take turns action base. It will, from what I remember, because uh, I was looking for more story in there, and what it is is kind of like um, Xenoverse. Whereas you okay. have you have you're a new recruit that's coming in, and you work your way up through the levels, and it tells you it kind of tells you the story. I really watched the show. Uh, Jeremy Evans, shout out to him, got me on it. So I started watching the show in tandem with playing the game, and that's how I figured out everything. But there's not, from what I played, there's not really uh, anything be- besides going and hacking and slashing. And, you know, okay. 20. Okay. That, that, was something, cause we, cause that game came out uh, this past weekend, or this mm. past week. I don't know how we they. Were talking, we were uh, talking about the AOS podcast, and we, I, couldn't re- I couldn't remember if it was a. a um, Action based or just like an actual turn based RPG? Can you know how those anime games are? Sometimes yeah. they, and I like, ah, I fooled you. This is actually turns. <laughs> and I don't my think, turn. <laughs> and I don't think they've changed anything uh, with it. But um, 
if you want to watch the anime, which I highly recommend, is uh, Ner- Earth no longer resembles the home that we know and we love. Um, and the beasts that are terrorizing the Earth are Aragami, terrifying beasts that live only to consume and are cra- carving out a path of destruction and misery wherever they can. Now, uh, in the show, again, as in all great anime shows, a kids basically have the potential to wield weapons and each one of these weapons is different depending on who wields it. Some of them can be, they have three different modes, like a cannon mode or a sniper mode. They have a lance type mode and then they also have like a either shield or sword mode. And so in the story and in the game, you are a character, you create your own character and you're working your way up through the ranks to go out and try to help rid the world of all these terrifying beasts. And that is God Eater. Now, God Eater has gone through three installations. I think there are three three seasons in the anime um i know there's at least two and i made it halfway through season one uh when i was uh playing have uh, i've never got on them man it's fun um it's just different just because you think you know what the world how the world is going to be and there's all these different dynamics like for some reason my character uh got picked to be able to actually use the uh the weapon and it's supposed to kind of like a legendary weapon and everybody's like, well, he doesn't have that training, and how can he be able to do this and do that? You know how they're hating a little bit? Yeah. And then you try to find out, they try to find out secrets about you, but you're finding, about, finding out about everybody that's stationed where you are and trying to make some bonds because you are going to be a part of a team at some point to take out these bigger monsters. So, uh, uh, yeah. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah I, I was pretty excited about it. It looks, it looks amazing. Uh, like I said, I just didn't, didn't I just couldn't remember. Good. Yeah how the play and style was no it's okay dude it happens it happens uh so that did you have any anime news because i didn't really find anything that was um well the only thing that i do want to make mention is that the uh, gundam nxt movie uh comes out this week i believe the 15th actually this friday uh selected theaters here in america um it's going it's not going to be as big as a dragon ball super was but yeah. it's going to be uh in a you know like a one night type thing so okay just check your local list and see if it's in there gundam <clears throat> it's one of the gundam's new things that they're doing this year because uh, you know this celebrates the 40th year of gundam and so at the eight, at the end of last year we saw different artworks of different gundams that are coming out this year so nxc and nt i don't know why i'm saying nxc you're thinking of wrestling NT. yeah seriously <laughs> NT is what's going to be um, uh, the first one. Okay, nice. And if I'm correct, it takes like I want to say nine or ten years after uh, uh, Unicorn, but I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. sure on that one. Okay, and you said it comes out the 15th, so the day after Valentine's. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Be looking out for that. Yes, um, Jordan Love Hewitt. Jordan, Jordan, wait, Joseph, Gordon. Joseph Gordon, love it. I said, yeah, man. I don't. I said Jordan, and I said Jason. So I was sorry, in, it took me so long. That, that's what that is. What I've been doing, <laughs> Joseph this Gordon, whole time, trying, to trying to find to out his name. Out uh, who is who is this person that I saw, Robin, and that I knew, Robin? Yes. Come here. Yeah, uh, so let's go ahead and go into wordsmith just like the blacksmiths of old we're going to help you forge the tongue and ears of anime steel a tongue that can say the most complex of anime terms and an ear that can pick out a baka or a sagoi and understand exactly what is meant and what is going on on this segment we give you one or more commonly used anime industry terms and phrases and teach you the meaning behind them so do you want to take the phrase or the uh, term Hit once you hit on it because I guess we're we'll looking for oh boy. I ended up uh like closing out my notes, so I'm trying to pull okay. them back up. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and start. So, the first one you might have heard this and from any character, but the one that I hear from the most is Monkey D. Luffy. It's Sugoi, generally meaning great or amazing, commonly used in phrases such as wa Sugoi ne, uh, meaning wow. That is so cool slash amazing. And you'll just have people say, Sagoy, Sagoy, Sagoy. Uh, I've been watching Run in the Sagoy. Wind. Sagoy. It just means wow or exciting. So yeah, that lot, is your turn. a lot of sport animes. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and a lot of high school animes will do a lot more of that yeah. than your typical action adventure uh, fantasy style world animes will. Exactly. Uh, did you get the notes back up? 
Or he is loading right now, so just okay. keep on rolling. So our phrase... Um, I'm going to kick in on anime anime. <laughs> okay, no, you're good. Our phrase for the day, um, and then we're going to give you the formal and informal. So when we talk about formal and informal, if it's somebody that you don't know really well or you're meeting somebody for the first time, you would traditionally use formal speech. If it's a friend, like me and Richard here, we'd use the informal. And it was funny because until I actually read it, I thought they were saying shabuti. Like uh, in that Peter Griffin, the Family Guy episode, should be not? no, uh, because it is it is S H uh, I B U R I. It sounds like Shibuti, but it's Shiburi. So Shiburi, oh, sh- yeah, but it, the R kind of blends in. So I see. that's yeah, they do that a lot over there. Yeah, yeah, on a lot of these, they, they do that a lot over there. That's true. <laughs> it's this, the uh, term. So, and we will have it written out in Japanese as well uh, in the actual kanji. Um, up on the Patreon page. So join patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show to see more of that content there. But Oishiburi, and that just means long time no see. Uh, if I wasn't going to do the, oh, and I forgot, also formal, everything ends with days, D E S U. So uh, omiyage is something we'll learn. It means gift. Omiyage days is how you'd say it for uh, the formal. If you're not, you just say, oh, Richard, uh, watashi wa omi- omiyage. And he's like, oh, you what, what's this gift you brought me? Mm-hmm. I don't like that <laughs> gift. You're not a real friend. <laughs> Get it out of here. Get it but, out But, yeah. Here. So think of shiburi, but it's H-I-S-A-S-H-I-B-U-R-I. So hashiburi or ohashiburi days. And that would be long time no see, and you'll hear that um, in any anime, really, like really sport, yeah, like sports. Quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but like you said, a lot of a lot of sports, and I think the reason why we're comparing to sports is because those are the animes that's more like our world. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like a crazy world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does that make? Am I explaining that right? Yeah. Like, we can more relate to the sports anime because no one has powers. No one's doing super, uh, superhuman things. They're just doing their normal daily grind. Exactly. And they're talking like us. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly it. So, again, your term for the day is Sugoi and then Oshiburi Days or Hishiburi. There we go. Um, those are our phrases. And let's take a quick pause for the cause, and we'll come back with Anime Shmanime, uh, the new segment. My anime is black, mm-hmm. and I am too. We'll be right back. Welcome to the adventures of Splacatel, or the AOS Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Buck. And this is Tony. And we are a video game podcast, giving you all the update video game releases that are coming out that you need to know, and the video game news that we want you to know. Follow us on Facebook, Black and Gaming Network, and Twitter and Instagram at Black and Gaming. And you can also find this podcast on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, by searching the AOS Podcast. Woo! Hey folks, this is Elijah 5000 and Monica Robinson, and we're your host of A Little Bit of Anime, your number one stopping spot for all the latest anime news and reviews. If you want to join in all the fun and anime goodness, then make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts and Podbean. And please join us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. And remember, please brighten your day with, with a, little a little bit of anime. anime. And we are back. Ah, I'm I'm loving this. Yeah. I'm loving it today because uh, yeah, you would have the hiccups. It's just <laughs> something that you do. You yeah. just can't go a day without having the hiccups, can you? There we go. I'm All sorry. right. So we are back to the show, uh, celebrating Black History Month. My anime is black, and I am too. What we're gonna do? And this was the. <laughs> A phenomenal idea of the Buckety, the underscore Buckety himself, is we're going to give you not only prominent um, black characters in anime, but the anime series that they are going on, I mean, well, they're in, so that way you can go ahead and check out those anime and these characters. So do you want to go ahead and start us off, sir? Yes. Since this is an anime that I remember spitting to you yes. a while back, mm. we got Mr. 
brother man, Jason Silver from Kirkwood's Basketball last game, which was a movie, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's about yep. the OVA. Mm-hmm. Yes, it yeah. was. Um, if you don't know about Kirkwood's new basketball, or Kiriko no basketball, it's an anime based on um, in Japan with this group of six phenomenal middle school uh, basketball players that grow up to be high school and they all have their unique basketball talents um, going up against each other with de- in different, different schools. So anyways, um, Jason Silk, that's the man we're talking about today, is one of the main, uh, anti- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out. Antagonists. Uh, in- 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 Antagonists. In- Antagonists. And antagonists. Antagonist, yeah, and the Kuroko no Basketball Extra Game sequel. He's a member. He's a member of the American Street Ball uh, team named the Jabba Walk. Yeah, whenever they got that from, uh, <laughs> which are, uh, which will go up against Kuroko Kagami and the Generation of Miracles. He is the team center. Uh, if I'm correct, he was. There, wasn't he their captain? Uh, I didn't think he was the captain. He wasn't okay. No, he That's was cool. like the. He is. Um... I, I knew he was a center, but he, he was basically like a rock. A, a powerhouse. It's like a Shaquille O'Neal version with hair. Mm-hmm. Um, his his attitude is very arrogant. He's also a little ignorant, and he refers to himself as Mighty Me. Um, <laughs> he only cares for the ladies, and uh, in, in basketball, and he's he would not care for other people in his surroundings unless God Gold Junior would be the one to do so. I don't know where. I guess I skipped the line. Um, but yes, uh, he, he he kind of plays off like a bully. Um, yeah, but he got the skills to back it up, and I think you know, playing being a center, you kind of have to come in as a very dominant force. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, if you have not checked out the OVA, definitely check out Extra Game Career Corner Basketball. The first of our anime is black. Yes, thank you, sir. And this OVA was uh, I, it was good as an OVA mm-hmm. and a mm-hmm. manga. Eat him up. Eat him up, cross him up. Sorry. Yeah, no, he's oh, he's, he got that M one street ball. So mm-hmm. let's keep it. Back. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's keep it going. Next on oh, the my list. Mom bought me that shoe. <laughs> uh, next on the list is Mugen from Samurai Champloo. Uh, my man. Yes, and people like Mugen's not black. Well, we don't really know where Mugen is from. There's so many things that are going on, but Mugen is a ferocious animalistic warrior with a fighting style. Inspired by breakdancing, Jin is a ronin samurai who wanders the countryside alone. They may not be friends, but their paths continually cross. And with ditzy waitress Fu gets them out of hot water with the local magistrate, they agree to join her and search for the samurai who smells like sunflowers. Um, samurai Shampoo is an older anime that is given so many... Uh, uh, influences to anime that we that we know oh, yeah, now. That's one of the pinnacle. Yeah, um, that's one of, like the uh, the OGs of anime, especially a lot there of go. you know Western viewers, uh, because as we find out, especially having our, our Elijah Bailey show podcast, that so many people started watching anime through Toonami. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and that and and, and Shampoo was one of the ones that used to be on Toonami. So yeah, that's one of the founding fathers. Yes, it is. Uh, My a, boy Mugen. A Mugen, a, a brash vagabond with, uh, from the penal colony of the Ryukai Islands. Mugen is 19 years old, wandering with a wildly unconventional fighting style. Rude, lewd, vulgar, conceited, temperamental, and psychotic, he is something of an anti-hero. He is fond of fighting and has a tendency to pick fights for petty reasons. It is implied in a few episodes that he is also a womanizer with his libido sometimes getting the better of him. He wears metal, uh, metal soul gaita and carries an exotic psi handed sword on his back that has like a lightning, uh, like it built into the hilt. Uh, in Japanese, the word Mugen means infinite. And it speaks to his ways of being limitless as a fighter. He was a former pirate, uh, in the title cards, his totem is a rooster. So when you're watching um, the title scroll, the rooster is him. Uh, this uh, manga and anime comes from Main Globe and has 26 episodes. So Mugen is number two on the list. Uh, you can tell by the hair he's black. Come on now. You do got the naps. Uh, got the naps. And then I'll take the next one because I, you haven't started watching Run in the Wind, have you? I have not. Um, I, I remember you actually have posted a picture of one of them, and I was like, uh, "I was like, man, he looks from he looks from there. I wonder what he's watching." I think I saw something on either Funimation or Crunchyroll. I think it was Crunchyroll's Instagram page where it's about uh, was it is it cross country or is it track? 
cross country. They say track okay, and field, but it's cross country. Yeah, more specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I've, but yeah, you, you can take it. I've, I've caught up on all sixteen episodes currently. Uh, produ- uh, production IG, and then comes from Sentai Filmworks. This is running uh, with the wind. Our third character is Musu. And you will see him. It's uh, Musu Kamara. He is the black kid in the show, a part of this team. Um, on a chilly March day, Kansi University, fourth year, and Kiso uh, Haiji encounters Katakuri running uncommonly fast through the streets at night and forces him into living in their, uh, their track and field house. And basically the story is um, Haiji wants to create a team of 10 runners so he finds each one of these guys and you kind of learn throughout the story he found them at different times in their life they all could have pretty much free room and board but once he got the 10th person he unveiled to him that it was a track and field house for the university and for them to keep their board and keep everything they'd have to join the track team because he suffered a leg injury and he wants to get back and running now kakaroo who he meets on that day running is exceptionally fast and it draws him in but it's the character the He's not the black dude, is he? No. No, uh-huh. we're getting ready to get to our main character. Musu is the kind how kind hearted uh black guy of the show. A native to Tanzania. He moved to Japan to study space and engineering as a sponsored international student at the university. His Japanese still has flaws, leading to some misunderstandings and writing mistakes, but he's kind and earnest. Musu is always supportive of his other team members and is well known by the residents of the local shopping district. And uh Musu is overly uh sentimental in the show so you'll catch him crying sometimes but he is a backbone as far as uh keeping everybody motivated and in good spirits um and i like the way they portrayed him he's kind of goofy but he's not he doesn't he's not into hip-hop he's not into drugs stereotype black person that's good exactly so the that's, best. They do it right. His lips don't look huge either. Yeah, exactly. And then there's also other black, there's other people that are um, in J- living in Japan and they're running in track as well. So, so you don't question. Really, yeah. Is that and or, or, or Anne's, uh, uh, was that what, part of his letter? The dog that I'm seeing? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. From Cowboy Bebop? Uh uh-uh, uh. No. That's a different one. It, uh, I don't think that dog's a corgi. It might be a corgi. It, like a it might actually be a corgi. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is a corgi, but it's just a little bit different. I mean, because Ains is Ains, dude. You don't never yeah, compare another dog. Ains. I don't know why it's called Ains. Yeah, you was you drunk or uh, off, yeah, whatever. Oh. Uh, but go ahead and give him number four, buddy. The man who needs no introduction. We got Gonzo from Afro. MF and Samurai. I'm not gonna cuss because I got my family here. Um, play by if you hear the. Uh, the, this is one of the animes I super recommend. Dub. I don't know. Did you ever listen to it in sub? Oh yeah, yeah. How was it? Was it just as good? I mean, he can't. No, it was, was good. It, like, was I, it as good as Dub though? I mean, no, because of Sam Jackson. Boy, you can't get you can't get better than Sam Jackson. Jackson. So anyway, uh, uh, Afro Samurai. Uh, pretty much the story is when a young boy uh, witnesses his father get cut down mercilessly by the guy that only his no name is Justice. And after taking his life of his father, Justice cast aside his number two hand back and took the number one to claim its godly powers as his own. At this moment, what will, Sam, what will uh, Gonzo do? He takes revenge and you see how cold he is with his cold heart because he's really not even a he's not really a good guy at all. Um, it, he could be worse, I guess, if you want to say, <laughs> mm. but he, he plays like. He don't play around at no. all. Afro uh, will cut you down where you stand, boy. He cut is you down where you stand. Uh, talk about your mama, and then <laughs> probably go meet up with her later on, and then oh. might even kill her. Oh, that's that's rough, dude. That's yeah. real rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But no, this was. If you guys have not seen Afro Samurai, uh, that you're you're doing an injustice to yourself. Yeah, you're missing out on a lot of great things. Again, Sam Jackson is another celebrity that loves anime and put this anime together for people that love uh, almost like a spaghetti western but really based in the Japanese or Okinawan samurai uh, code and, and law um, is revolutionary to say the least yeah um, 
Which one do you want to do next? I'll go uh, straight to Bleach, man. You cannot. Next on the list, and uh, it's not like we're not giving props to women. There's a lot of great uh, black women in anime. So let's go ahead and go to Yaorichi, who is a part of Bleach, who is was known as the black cat for the longest time because that's what she portrayed herself as. Bleach follows the story of Ichigo Kurosaki. When Ichigo meets Rukia, he finds his life has changed forever. Um, now, Yaorichi... Um, made it into Bleach on uh, pretty early on. Uh, God, I can't remember exactly what episode it was. I think it's episode 15 of the anime. There 15, we go. Yeah. Episode 15 of the anime. And then when we look at uh, the manga, she was in volume 6, chapter 61. Uh, Yarichi is a former captain of the 2nd Division of the Godi 13, as well as a former commander um, of the Onimitsudo Kido. Uh, her lieutenant was also a uh, like an apprentice to her. And I like that about the show. Like They started bringing in darker characters or black characters because before mm-hmm. you see Ichigo and Chad. And they're kind of friends, but they're friends at a distance. When we get here, we're seeing actual lieutenants and captains have subordinates that idolize them. And it's not like we're just going to idolize all the Japanese lieutenants or all the white lieutenants or this. Everybody was treated with a certain amount of respect and to be fair, they gave her a little bit more sass uh, than yeah. most of them, and uh, it, it was it's it, refreshing. It's, it's good though; it's good. Like that, yeah. that's fitting. It's not even stereotypical. Like that's fitting. Yeah. Um, having abandoned her command of both positions, she works with uh, uh, Mister Yohara and his shop. Uh, to help the human world. And that's where Bleach kind of takes the story. Like, there's people that follow strict code of soul society, don't really interact with humans, and then everybody else is like, you know, we these the human souls come to us either way. We have to deal with souls and hollows, so uh, there's it, there's a little bit more responsibility than just pro- protecting soul society itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's an, another amazing female, black female character. Um, and she changes the game of the show, being able to outclass high-level lieutenants, being able to teach Ichigo how to pretty much be himself and use his power, then the reasoning behind why she left and and the care, the intelligence. I, I really love the character. Uh, yeah. It turned the whole show around for me. No, 100%. I, I agree with you on that one. So let's keep the, the strong black sisters in anime going. All right. I ain't really emphasize strong and sister on this because I feel <laughs> like she was a uh, <laughs> she felt like a sister. Uh, Michigo, how do you spell her last? Uh, is it Melandro? Who? Melandro. Melandro. Michigo Melandro. Yep, from Michigo uh, to uh, Hachin. Uh, Michigo is a stunning escape convict with lethal looks and daily respect for the law, uh, or disrespect for the law. Uh, her partner, or not really a partner, her little orphan girl, Hetchin, is a helpless orphan who's pushed to the breaking point because she has some crazy uh, foster parents. Yeah. On their own, they're two unique, different um, people, but they work together in mysterious ways. Uh, and it's kind of cool because they kind of start learning about each other and becoming like a weird, weird friendship couple. Yeah. My man, you thought you was on my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> What I love about her is that she is so you know bad a. Uh, oh yeah, as you, I don't know which I don't know which clip that you got playing. Uh, uh, the clip where they take her into jail and she's in uh, cuff and they're pushing okay. her in with uh, what's her name Atsuku Atsuko yeah, the other so black with Afro. Yeah, she escapes like well, no spoiler, but once she leaves jail, um, as I said, she's an escaped convict. Uh, she's one of those people that when everybody, when anyone tries to uh, come across a little girl or try to hit on her or something like that, she immediately hits that tomboy, that rough, oh, you know, yeah. kicking in the head, punching the face. Like she ain't scared about getting her hands dirty. Not at and all. And if I want to say right, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to spoil it. It's a really good short anime. I think it's like what twenty episodes, twenty four. Uh, yeah, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two episodes. Yeah, it's definitely really good. It's it's one of those classics that I actually like. I low key forgot. <laughs> um, until when you put it in this, I was like, "Oh, that was this, that was a classic anime." Dude, they did it right on that one. They That's did why it I'm right. Switching over from coffee to wine. Just keep going. Oh, you okay? Okay, coffee to wine. You never know what's in that cup. Next yes, on the yes, list. Yes. Next on the list, we got to go straight to another classic that came out in two thousands. Uh, yes, Black Lagoon. And as we know, 
the commander and man, uh, the main man of the uh, Lagoon Company is Dutch. But Rokoro's mundane trip to South uh, East Asia turned from pleasure cruise to a uh, festival of pain when modern day pirates take him hostage. Revy, Dutch, and Benny are the ruthless crew of the Black Lagoon. For them, getting shot at while smuggling drugs, guns, and stolen goods is part of a typical day of work. And Rock or Rokoru is joining the team. Dutch himself, you're about to see Dutch go post on Haywire on some Nazis, some neo Nazis, along with Revy. Um, but let's give you a little bit of uh, context and background. He was said to be a former United States Marine who uh, fought in the Vietnam War. Shortly before the end of the war, presumably around 1973, Dutch went AWOL, escaping to Thailand and started working as a mercenary. He found the Lagoon Company, or he founded the Lagoon Company at some point during his uh, mercenary career. In the El Bel, uh, what is it? El, El Bella de La Merte, yeah. Uh, saga in the manga. Uh, however, it was uh, su- suggested because <laughs> you know you heard it before. That's why. Yeah, I think that's how it is. <laughs> uh, but it's suggested by uh, Caxton that Dutch lied about his Vietnam service, which would leave his past unknown. Though it is implied that the man has a uh, as serious as Dutch wouldn't lie without good reason, and Dutch keeps it real. Make sure to keep uh, Dutch is the homie. Like, he, that's who. That's who Dutch is. Dutch is the homie that. He got your back. Uh, he, you know, he he is, you know, he's strict. He's he got his, him. he's strict. He got his ways, but he got your back. Dutch is only about one of the only people that can rein in Revy when she goes to work, but he mm-hmm. does put her to work. Uh, let's keep this going and go on to the next one for Black hey, History Month. What you Month. do him since I never watched? I should do the next two since I never watched either one of them, and then I'll do the three after that since I know. Okay, yeah, you yeah. wanna. He, I he, don't want to disrespect anyone because I, I don't know who Crusader or who Muhammad. Okay, but yeah, Muhammad is <laughs> Muhammad Asvidal from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. Um, JoJo's Bizarre uh, Adventure Stardust Crusaders is uh, part of David Productions and has forty-eight episodes. Set in nineteen eighty-seven, the series follows Jotaro Kujo and his comrades who have developed mysterious powers known as stands. Jotaro, his grandfather Joseph Jostar, and their allies travel to Egypt in search of the evil and immortal vampire Dio Brando, and known solely as Dio to save Jotaro's mother, Holly, uh, whose stand has awakened and threatens to consume her in 50 days. Meanwhile, Dio has commissioned a number of assassins with various types of deadly stands to destroy them before they can reach him. Uh, Muhammad is our first... Uh, really black character in the series that actually helps the JoJo's and you, you'll know what I mean by JoJo's once you actually watch the series but uh, debuted in the manga chapter uh, 115 Jotaro Kujo part 2 an anime episode 1 of Stardust Crusaders introduces an old Egyptian friend of Joseph Joestar he joins the group on the journey to defeat Dio providing cultural wisdom and guidance along the way uh, Adol uh, is a stand user and wields the fire manipulating stand Magician's Red and that's what you're seeing in the background now um, so let me ask you this man I never yeah. was able to fully get into JoJo's, JoJo's Bizarre it was so weird it's like when I'm watching it on TV I'm able to actually watch it and mm-hmm. like you know be like oh okay that's what's up but certainly I, I, I just need to get on it yeah it's it's one that is uh, it's, it's kind of different because you're basically doing the Pulp Fiction deal with different people in the yeah. family the next generation and it, it it feels like it'll throw you off but it won't like you'll know okay. like once you get to the second like there's part, so many characters too like it gets that way but some of them don't really come back because when it went from uh jonathan joestar to joseph i was like oh we're gonna see this we're gonna see that nope the, anybody that lived during that period you know they're dead so it okay. it, it moves on to the next one um, okay. Okay. so yeah it's a good one you, you should try it don't be it, it'll seem a little weird at first. It might be a little well, slow. Well, like I said, when I watch the episodes, I'm all down for it. I'm like, oh, this is good. What's up? Yeah, you can go ahead and just watch it, dude. Um, next one on the list is New Game, which New Game is a short uh, series by Doga Kobo. It's 12 episodes, and this is a really short clip. But having been inspired by a character design of a particular video game when she was younger, Ioba Suzukaze, a high school graduate, becomes working as a character design for the game developer's Eagle Jump. As she works on modeling and designing characters for game and development, she becomes uh, 
uh, antiquated. Uh, she uh, she becomes and befriends her fellow coworkers and colleagues um, in the character design department. Oh yeah, she's ruthless. Um, but we have Umiko. Yeah, I'm plug on the laptop real quick. Okay, keep going. <laughs> okay, no, you're fine. Umiko um, Agan, and I always just say Umiko because I don't like messing up her name. But she is our character. Um, that we're dedicating to next she debuted in manga chapter 15 an anime episode one is a programmer and a military enthusiast she has a collection of airsoft weapons in her workspace she will pull the trigger under a second if someone makes her mad but even though she has a fearful anger issue uh, with people that poke her buttons she upholds a cute and loving side of herself that rarely, that is rarely uh, seen by others whether her attitude may seem harsh uh, to her co- her colleagues, she secretly worries about them and their feelings when she uh, believes she has said too much. Uh, Umiko takes on the role as a side character from the manga and anime series of New Game. Umiko is a programmer that usually helps um, gaming groups such as motions teams, character designs, and other groups with their work. However, her main job is to fix bugs, issues inside the game that is in the development stages. So if you want to get, really get a look at um, developers and how video games are made in the anime format. This is the show for you. Nice, cute, short shows. Um, it's just uh, kind of mm-hmm. like check that out. Where'd yeah. you find it? At? Is it on Crunchy? Crunchyroll. Yep. Yeah. It's just like the anime version of The Office. Okay. Oh, okay. So a little humor in it. Uh huh. And mm-hmm. uh, next is the legendary one. So go ahead and take oh, yeah. it. We gotta take on our boy Oob from the Dragon Ball Z GT and also Super Era, even though they haven't dropped his official name. Well, they did, uh, they who did, was but it was a baby. Someone came up to Goku before the Tournament of Power and was like, I want to say it was King Kai or Dende. Someone it was Dende. Came to him was it was like, when it was he Dende. Was, yeah, when he was riding on uh, at Dende's place, he was riding around. And he said, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's like, hey, FYI, man, there's... It, was he born? He was born already, wasn't he? He he just was born, yeah, but he's like a baby, an infant baby he, like Pam. Yeah, he's like a baby just like everybody else in this world. Um, <laughs> there's so yeah. many babies walking around. But yes, Oob, uh, which uh, originally appeared in... I'm actually... My computer just kind of froze up on me. Oh, I got you. Um, uh, toy animation and uh, Oob. There we go. You got it? Or they come back? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah two, 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 or manga crap. volume forty-two, chapter five eighteen, and anime episode two eighty-nine. There we go. And the the talk of ooh, especially in the Dragon Ball Z series, is when Goku wanted to resurrect Majin uh, Majin Buu as a mm-hmm. less evil spirit. Yeah. Uh, therefore, that's where Oob came into play. Um, you know, it's Buu backwards, pretty much. Yeah. So. Um, uh, he revolved more in the GT series because he was older, and Oob was a black Mohawk uh, human mixed Majin fighter. Yeah. Um, in the GT series, he was pretty much a Z fighter mm-hmm. uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, and then I think in didn't he have a movie that he was in? Yeah, he was in. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he was uh, in the one where they fought, uh, where they met uh, Tepia, and he was playing the flute and stuff. Yeah, the yeah, Z-sword. yeah. He was there. He was also a part of the Black Star Dragon Ball uh, GT saga. Yeah. Uh, he was even a uh, part of the uh, Baby Saga with uh, the the when Vegeta got possessed and whatnot, trying to get stronger and whatnot. And how everybody was tripping. <laughs> uh, he's been also featured in a lot of the fan base. Um, Dragon Ball Z series. Uh, he's he's a hardcore fan favorite, and oh, I think yeah. that's one reason why I was talking to someone about uh, Super. Yeah, they're doing a good job at Super. I think they're really trying to make a lot of stuff canon, mm-hmm. and they're just taking his time. Oh and yeah. Like I said, I think they hinted towards him. I wonder what his looks would be like. Wonder if they would keep him black, keep him looking like the oh, original, yeah. or you know whatnot. He's still from uh, that small island, like the Middle Eastern island. So I think he's still going to be black. That's what's up. That's what's up. Next up on our list is another man that needs no introduction. Uh, if you have not watched Naruto Shippuden, we got my boy Killer B. Yes. Um, dang, it's not Nar- Shippuden's five hundred episodes. Oh yeah, dude, it is five hundred total. Man. So, anyways, uh, God, oh, we got Killer B. Uh, did, did, did you put his older brother in here too? Uh, the Royal Kage? No. Yeah. Okay. We I got just did Killer B. B and the Royal Kage. I'll just say both of them. Okay. Um, pretty much Killer B is the, the one you're about to see here fighting Itachi. 
But um, he's a part of the Cloud Village, and he is another. Uh, what do you call those people who got the um, beast living inside of them? Oh, uh, Jin Jin Shikuri. I always mess it up. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> he's a tail beast. Nine people on the earth that has uh, demons inside of them, pretty yeah. much. Uh, Killer B was also one of them, just like Naruto, who had a demon inside of him from the Cloud Village. He actually had, the, I think, the eight tail octopus. Yep. And uh, the fight scene we see right here is actually when uh, this is actually during the Great War. So he's already been introduced. He's running around Naruto. He's fighting the uh, reincarnated version of um, Pain and also Itachi. Mm. So everybody's about to get possessed. And as you see, Killer B fights with his swords. He normally, I think he holds, how many swords? Is it just two swords? I feel like he holds a lot more. No, than eight. Eight? Yeah, like an octopus. Um, he, yeah, he holds eight different swords through his mouth. He holds them in between his joints. Um, and he's super fast, super mm -hmm. fast. So, uh, and his brother, or his, yeah, his older brother is the, uh, actually the Hakoge of the Cloud Village. So, they holding it down, Wakanda style, in the clouds. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, and then last but not least, go ahead and hit it since you are the Canary. Yes. Hunter X Hunter. Mm. Uh, she's only in the and I heard she makes a bigger deal in the manga, but oh, yes, in the does. anime, she's only in uh, a few episodes. I think I want to say maybe three or four. Uh, but uh, she is actually uh, works for Kills Assassin Family Organization. Uh, she's one of the gatekeepers and also a trained butler to come. Yep. Uh, she gives her story. A little bit in the anime. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, here we go. She grew up in Meter City, which you will actually see that even later on. The city that the mafia and the Phantom Troop also call home. Uh, she wasn't an orphan, was she? Uh huh. No, I don't think she. She was. Yeah. Yeah, she was an orphan. And then when Gong first met her, she kind of kept her. No, when Kill first met her, um, uh, she was already brought in and Kill had came home and saw this little girl who was around their age and wanted to kind of befriend her at the same time as working as for their butlers you kind of have to be on a serious uh, mm -hmm. you know I'm not a friend I'm your butler uh, type yeah. thing but you could tell they had a really 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 good bond so uh, yeah she rolled through she had her power she held it down against the original uh, I think uh, bandits that tried to come across the city or come across her little encampment and um, yeah and the, those are going to be the anime as, long, as well as the characters that you guys need to watch out for. So we'll go through it one more time, then we'll take a break, and we'll come back with uh, our anime and manga of the month. But starting at the top, we have Jason Silver from Kuroko No Basketball or Kuroko's Basketball, The Last Game. Then we have Mugen from Samurai Champloo. We have uh, Musa Kamara from Run With The Wind, which is a brand new anime out right now, 16 episodes in. We have Afro Samurai from Afro Samurai. Uh, Yarichi Shihonen from Bleach. We have Michiko Malandro from Michiko and Hachin. We have Dutch from Black Lagoon. Mohamed Abdal from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. Then we have Umiko from New Game. Oob from Dragon Ball Z slash Dragon Ball GT slash Dragon Ball Super. Uh, and then last but not least on the list, we have Killer B from Naruto Shippuden and then Canary from Hunter x Hunter. Check out those yes. anime titles. Good question. Out of yeah. all these characters, which one's your favorite? Out of all? Uh, it seems like you might have an answer already. Do you have an answer? You know what? That's actually my favorite is actually someone that, um, well, not to the back. Um, out of this list, I would say Mugen. Mugen is bad. I say it's, 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 it's tied between Mugen and Afro Samurai. Mm. Because for a while, I didn't know Mugen was black. Oh, yeah. Um, I had suspicion, but I didn't know. But it explains a lot of stuff he does. Um, oh, yeah. So before I knew that, I would have to say probably Amazon uh, Afro. Okay. I'm going Oob. Who brought back the uh, darker characters in Dragon Ball? Uh, because uh, what is his name? King King Choppa is the king of his village and actually trained U before this tournament. And he was a big character when I first started watching Dragon Ball. Like, oh man, this is like they had the big lip black guy that was with the red lip ribbon army. Then they had another big lip black guy that Goku yeah, beat up. For Mr. Popo. Exactly. So King Chapa was cool because like, okay, this, this dude's black. He's held in his own with Goku. He's real skilled, but inevitably he gets beat. And so now to have Oob 
come back in that steed, it kind of gives me that nostalgia. But Oob was, you know, that very first episode of GT, they tried to make him some, like the shit. And then through that series, they kind of kind of watering him down. Yeah, I kind of took it from him. But I still like Oob. He's going to be my favorite one. Going from like a weak mm-hmm. guy that just wants to protect people to saying, hey, I'll be the next one to take up the mantle. Yeah. Uh, and with that, let's take our next pause for the cause, and then we'll be back to go over anime and manga of the month for you guys and close out the anime show for this week. Uh, we do have to talk about the Jump Force Jump Off, but that'll be when we come back. Yes. We'll be right back. <laughs> I love watching anime. So do I. I watch it every day. So do I. The first place I go to check out for new anime is Crunchyroll. Yes. Crunchyroll is this like connective world of anime. Crunchyroll delivers content from leading media producers directly to you, the viewers, translated professionally in multiple languages. You also get access to the simulcasts. Yes, and the great thing about Crunchyroll is Crunchyroll is a service that is available for free, but if you want to watch ad-free, all you have to do is become a premium subscriber for $6.99. So if you guys want to watch anime just like Monica and I do, go to Crunchyroll. And we are back. And now it is time for the very last segment of the show, segment four, anime and manga of the month. Go ahead and hit him up with uh, anime of the month, sir. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah you're good. <laughs> I, was talking, I was talking all this mess and I forgot I muted my mic. Um, yes, anime of the month. Remember, Saga of Tanya the Evil, which if you don't remember on our first episode of this month talking about it, uh, the OVA is about to drop out this coming up week, so I suggest you catch on to this. It's a first out of three-part series, I believe, and they're probably going to make it into the series. But anyway, uh, Sanya, or Saga of Tanya the Evil is pretty much about a Japanese older man who's getting paid on salaries as a dick, firing someone. When yeah. he walks down to the subway station, that person he fired seek revenge and pushed him out in front of the subway and killed him. When he was about to die over, this figure called uh, Person X, I believe, or Being X, who is pretty much God, was trying to have an intervention with him, and he did not want to believe in God. So he reincarnated him into a 12-year-old little German girl. Or I would say German because that's how they're... I feel like that's what they're... Yeah, I think so. Blonde hair, German, blue eyes. Like World War One type German. Oh, yeah. But they're in a world where there is magic involved. Um and plus, Tanya remembers everything that was in her previous life. She remembers being a businessman. She's educated. She don't really have to relearn anything. And she spends this whole time trying not to be on the front lines during this yeah. war. But through the grace of being X, she's always thrown out on the front line. Uh, so definitely check out this anime. It's probably one of my easy, when you see it, you're just like, oh, that's the shit. So that's our anime of the month, getting you ready for the movie that is coming out this coming up week. Yes. And then manga of the month is Donburu Non Kiro Materu question mark. Or in English, how many kilograms can you lift in dumbbells by Yura Sunday uh, manga one written by Yakabo Sandrovich and illustrated by M A A M that ma'am. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sub- <laughs> Sakura Hibiki is your average high school girl with a vicarious appetite. Noticing her clothes tightening in lieu of her slowly expanding waistline, she discovers and decides to look into enrolling in a nearby Silverman gym. There she runs into a girl from her grade named Saroyan Akimi. Who is also that? That was the question when I read those what? names. Like, is that the right right way to say her name? Akimi, I know is right. Um, yeah, we do it, man. You don't know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but Akimi, yeah, that is true. Who is also the uh, student council president at her school is also a muddle, uh, muscle fetish freak and tries to get Hibiki to enroll to the gym despite its high ratio of macho men. And so this is basically the adventure of these two becoming friends and going through the struggles of working out, the pain, the muscle soreness, the lactic acid buildup, and actually learning about what they're doing each and every, every chapter. Very funny, very smart, um, very informative for people that are trying to work out. Um, I, I encourage you guys to go ahead and read. We still got a couple more weeks of February left, so go ahead and yes. click those hyperlinks. Yeah, about two more weeks left, so you yeah, still got plenty, got of, time plenty to of time to finish through this stuff and yeah, get l- caught up before we hit you with some more. Yeah, at least get the first get the first five chapters out of the way. They're not that long, and then Tanya, the saga of Tanya the Evil, you should be able to watch that whole deal. 
Um, but it's in the two seasons, but yeah, it's super, super easy. Um, in the description, click those hyperlinks. It'll take you exactly where you can read the manga or watch the anime legally. And then also anything that we talk about in the show, uh, those links will take you to something there. Or if you are a part of Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Elijah, under, uh, Elijah Bailey show, you can click those links and it'll take you to trailers, um, the full written up article or other places, other websites. So that way you can have the same information that we're providing you here. You can just go a little bit more in depth about it. Um, is there anything else you want to say about anime? Are there any recommendations that you would give that wasn't on the list or um, anything for Black History Month? Uh, no, I think we hit the list just good. You know, I think Old Boy from also Coracle New Basketball, who was a part of the five generations, who was one who was trying to play like I know who you're talking um, Aki, I, his name starts with an A. Yeah, it's, it's something super short, too. Um, let me see if I can look him up. But he's also a. Uh, uh, huge member in Corpo No Basketball. He's mm-hmm. also um, the Very dark skin. star player um, of the actual Generation of Miracles. I'm yeah. pulling it up right now. Let's see. Characters. Um, that didn't tell me nothing. Um, do you see it anywhere yet? Uh, I stopped looking because you were looking. I was oh, like, oh, he's, this man's got it. it right there. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's really all I had. Okay. Um, I just, I just want to give him uh, his his praise his as well. Yeah, um, I think I'll, oh, I can't find it. I thought I was looking right. Let me let me type in this person. You got okay. anything left? Bro? Yeah, I, uh, I give some uh, some shout outs and props. Props to Piccolo. Uh, for being the black, was a black person, the longest Girl, standing, exactly the longest standing black person in Dragon Ball. Uh, also, hit we know hits black. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Okay, I got his name. It's uh, ooh, he had a weird name. <laughs> Daki, oh, Omai, Omi, Om, Omai, Omai, A O M I N E is his last name. That's kind of what he went by. But yeah. you'll see him. He yeah, played yeah. as like the number two, the Where shooting he, guard. Yeah, he was, so, he was crazy. He, he he was ice cold. He was ice cold. Break your ankles. Twenty four seven. Who else uh, is a, is a, is somebody else we can give some praise to? Um. Oh, Sid, um, Sid from uh, Soul Eater, who they okay. killed off yeah, early yeah. on, uh, Zombie Sid. Uh, what else? Just whatever black characters you see or they're dark. Uh, what's her name from uh, Code Geass? Valetin? Valete? Oh, New yeah, Ace? Valete. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, like, give props to all these dark-skinned characters. They're, they're in there for a reason. They have compelling parts that are very pivotal to the series that you're watching. Um but as always, we always support anything that's in, in, in our fandom and yours. And today it's anime because it's our anime day. Uh, support the industry legally. Watch the uh, the videos. Watch the shows. We have a couple things coming. I know that on our fourth week, our Bailey Bugle, we're having a huge crossover with a little bit of anime and superpower movie podcast talking about um, Dragon Ball Super. Then uh, next week, we have a special guest, Reese Dodd, coming on uh, for our video game episode, who is going to talk about uh, his video game or his world. If you go back to previous episodes, I can't remember what episode, like 60-something, I think, was Reese was on. It wasn't that early on, but he was he was he was in there. I know Greg gaming with Greggy was episode 16. He came on like maybe 20s, maybe 60s. But he uh, was the society made on hemp, and he actually plays a game that uses this is the interesting part. A traffic based system but what he did in his world that he created is got rid of all traffic you have to walk places so there's no use for the traffic lights there's no use for main the majority of the functions in the game but he created a, a society that's healthy and thriving and the game clock ratio he can go through four or five years in in no time and see if that society is, is really something that is that could uh, basically be transposed to our world yeah, we'll let Reese talk about it. Yeah, Reese. While we're in that, uh, I felt like Reese this 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 trip to Vegas. Honestly, I had drunk some beer that had some uh, stuff in it, and uh, I don't know how people live like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing against it. Like I do not knock any anybody who that was in marijuana or, or CBD. Is it what's it called? C CBD C, CBD, yeah. C, CBD oils or, or yeah. stuff like that. I don't knock no one. But man, it, it just puts me in a in a place to where I don't want to do anything but sleep. <laughs> ah, he's an old man. Old and then when man. I'm trying to function, it feels like I'm so You're paranoid slow. about me functioning and make sure I do everything right. It's pointless <laughs> to me. <laughs> this is now, I'm stressful again. <laughs> ah, 
<laughs> so, so more power to you, but I'll stick with my alcohol. <laughs> I know, I know exactly how I'm. I feel, out. yeah, <laughs> with the alcohol. My wife, yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> the, the, fear, it, it was so bad. So I, I, I wish I could bring back something you could try, dude. Because it's like, it was just one beer can, and you're mm-hmm. drinking it. You know, and your our mind says like, okay, this is beer. It's not really going to do anything because it's one can yeah. of beer. And then we're drinking it. I'm like, oh, okay, it's not too bad. And I probably got like a little bit below. Hey, can you go get the can, fam? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go grab the can real quick. Decoven's about to go grab the can. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Decoven. Um, I had a beer, and in you know, our minds, you know, Elijah, if I gave you one beer, you're not going to feel anything from that one beer, correct? Correct, yeah. So I, I'm drinking, and I'm probably like maybe like a little bit left. Decoven just brought the can. Uh, Two Roots Brewing Company. Okay. Uh, here it is right here, if you can see it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it has less than 0.5% alcohol content, but because Ooh. of the uh, the other ingredients, mm-hmm. um, it takes a little minute. For me, the, the, the COVID said it took about two hours. For me, it's probably like an hour and 15, hour and 20. Mm-hmm. I, all of a sudden, I got hit with like this wave <laughs> of oh, It was like, I'm like, all right, cool. No, I'm cool. I don't think I was drinking too much alcohol that day either. So I was like, all right, this was yesterday. I was like, I'm, I'm good. And poof, I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, Buck, here it comes. Here it comes. Just, uh, uh, you're here now. Hope you didn't drink too much, player, because this is all about to hit you hard. This is all so, it. Yeah, so I, I kind of got a little little hazy. Decova ended up like passing on the couch. Deandra, we were trying to warn her mm-hmm. about drinking this much, but she was like, oh, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me. So she, was just, <laughs> she killed her whole thing. I didn't even finish mine. Uh, she killed her whole thing, and then she was out from like six o'clock until like two o'clock this morning. So I don't feel that, my like, girl. You was knocked out all oh. night. Oh no, 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 no! The trouble, Baby crying, and everything, <laughs> <laughs> contemplating life's um, mm-hmm. questions. Like, why? Uh, jump force, yes, uh, Elijah. I actually want to get uh, touch, uh, talk to you about it after the stream, probably. Uh, I uh, figure out what day is best for you. It's kind of right on you now. Okay. Um, Tony gave me his information. So um, they're actually down to either do it this Saturday or this Friday. But if you need to wait till next week, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, I think I think next week. So I think we got stuff planned from Monday and then the weekend this weekend. Okay, cool, cool. So we'll try to do it either next Friday. Uh, that'll be the, or the 22nd or the 23rd of February. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll are you, are you, one of those states. Hmm? No, no, you're right, you're right. I'm getting the calendar mixed up. Yeah, that's right. That'll work. Darn yeah, it'll stupid. be the 23rd because the 24th is when we break down Broly with uh, Stone and Monica. Okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to think, do I have any other news? That's about it. Um, we want to thank everybody who's been supporting yeah. Black and Students. also Elijah Bailey's uh, page because of you guys. We're almost this close into finishing the YouTube studio. And once we finish that, it's gonna, you know, that's even gonna take our show to a better way for we can provide you with the stuff that you want to hear and listen to. So we want to thank all of you guys for watching, even just watching and following. You you guys are helping a lot doing that. Oh yeah, we appreciate it so much. But it's come to that time again. Tell everybody where they can find you in Black and Studios, sir. Um, you can find everything at blackandstudios.com, Black and Studios on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also email us at podcast at blackandstudios.com because I did fix that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is working now, including this stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, uh, you can find me at the honest robot. Yep, and you can find anything and everything you need to know about The Elijah Bailey Show on our official Facebook page, The Elijah Bailey Show. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Elijah Bailey Show. Just take the W off the end, just make it SHO. Send your emails to Elijah Bailey Show at gmail.com or simply subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, add us to your playlist and download on Spotify. And then also, if you don't use either one of those, you can also find us on Podbeam. Remember, Hyperlinks in the description will let you know everything that you need to know. I'm Elijah 5000. I'm the underscore buckety. And we'll catch your ass in the next podcast.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.